All right, this might just be the worst dirt bike I've ever bought. This is a 1998 Kawasaki KX125. Got this thing for $1,060, which was way, way, way too much. So I saw this on Facebook Marketplace up for $1,400. The seller said it was a 2001 KX125. He stated that he rebuilt the top end, has 165 pounds of compression, and he rode it a couple times, but it would randomly shut off. And he said all it needs is a carb tuning and a clean. And he said it's missing the throttle screw on the carb, so that's why it won't stay running. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'll come grab it, you know. I'll give you 1300 bucks for it. So I get there, and this young kid comes out to sell me this bike. And uh, all the plastics are off of it. The shrouds are off of it, the seat's off of it. And he goes, there's no coolant in it, no gas in it. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird, you know. So I start looking at the bike. Check this out. Look at the gap between the head and the cylinder right there. So first of all, the cylinder is welded. And there's a huge gap between the head and the cylinder. You can see the gasket's not even squished right there. And I asked the kid, I go, is that leaking from there? And he said, no. I said, so if we put coolant in here, it won't leak. He said, no. And he said he rode it around like this, had no issues with it leaking at all. It's like, hmm, that doesn't look like that's working, but I'll take your word for it. So I look around the rest of the bike. I'm like, this thing's pretty clapped out. <laughs> the plastics are the wrong plastics for it. The tires are all bald. The handlebars are bent up here. Levers are broken. And I come over here, and I look below the engine, like I always do, to see if there's cracks. And sure enough, there's a big JB weld right there on the water pump. So I don't know if there's a crack in the housing right here, or the water pump housing, or the cover, but somebody JB welded that thing shut and just like put JB Weld on it and left it like that. He said he bought it like that. Um, he said all he did was touch the, the top end. So I'm like, does it leak from there? He said no. He said never had a problem with leaking coolant. So I'm like, hmm, that's weird because the coolant's drained. <laughs> so we'll find out today if it leaks. And I go, so how'd the rebuild go? Did you rebuild it? He said, yep, I put a white scale piston in it. And I said, did you hone out the cylinder? He goes, yeah, but there are some deep scratches. I go, what? <laughs> He's like, yeah, there are some scratches that wouldn't hone out. I said, how bad? He said, they were pretty deep. And he goes, I was gonna re-sleeve it, but I didn't know who to take it to. So I'm like, oh great. So now the cylinder is bad, the head's bad, the cover right here could be bad, the cover here could be bad. And that's basically the whole engine. So today we're gonna go through this bike and just see how bad this thing is. Um, the goal is obviously to get this thing up, running, and driving, but I don't think that's possible with how many problems there are. But you never know. All right, little walk around. The brakes do work. So both brakes work, the lever though is broken off. You can see how bent the bars are up here. Not sure how that happened. Fork seals. Yeah, they look like they're leaking a little bit. <laughs> Rims are painted black. Frame is painted black. You can see originally it's supposed to be green. You do have the purple shock. That's the original shock in there. I'm guessing that's blown too. Chain and sprockets are rough. You can see sprockets are missing teeth. One, two. Yeah, that's not good. Let's see if the, the engine's cracked here. I don't see any cracks on the engine yet. But man, is it rough. Here's that weld, a little closer up, look. And there's the gap right there. 
rear sprocket clapped out. I'm not sure if it shifts. We'll we'll check that later. Throttle works. She is rough. Very, very rough. Rear shock is blown. Basically a pogo stick at this point. It feels weird when you kick it over too. It feels like it's getting caught on something. So, yeah, this one should be fun. All right, we got the bike in the garage. Let's start digging into it. I think the first thing we're gonna do is see if this thing leaks coolant. So, he said all the coolant was drained out of it. Let's get some in there and see what happens. So we're gonna put some cooling in it. I know it's gonna leak from right there. There's no way that's holding cooling in. I mean, look at that JB Weld patch. I mean, it's horrible. There's no way that doesn't leak. I would bet a million dollars it leaks from there. You know what? <laughs> it's not leaking. Somehow it's actually holding cool. I don't know how that's possible. Oh, nope, it's leaking. I spoke too soon. Yeah. Couple drips. Yeah. Well, now we know why there was no coolant in it. So he said it wasn't leaking at all. Alright, so that spot's leaking. Let's see if it's leaking by the head here. Yep. You can see coolant coming out right there by the head. That's leaking pretty good. So both spots are leaking that I suspected were leaking. Um, so not good at all. All right, let's get some gas in here. It's a little weird that there was no gas in there when I got there, because you'd think he'd want to try to start it up for me. But new, no, no gas at all. So I'm guessing it leaks either from the carb or the pet cock. No leaking gas yet. Let's see if it's leaking from the pet cock. Nope. Doesn't look like it. All right, gas is going in. Let's see if she fires up. Carb is not all the way. But he said he had it running like this. Oh, it's leaking gas really bad out of the carb. <laughs> Yep, I have the overflow. All right, let's just give it a couple kicks for the heck of it. <laughs> yep. 
Nope. Doesn't even pop over. So, let's start going through the whole thing. Just see what's going on. It's pretty bad though. I think we're gonna start with the air filter. See if there's one in there. Hey, yeah, there's an air filter in there. Wow. I think the seat's the best thing about this bike. Cause it's got a brand new seat cover on it. All right, air filter looks pretty new. It's all oiled up, looking good. Cool. All right. That hose is not clamped on right there. Missing the clamp. Let's see if all the wires are connected here. All the wires appear to be connected. Let's get that spark plug out. Missing the bolt there. Let's see what the plug looks like. I'm guessing it's completely white. There's no way this thing ever ran. Hmm. Smells like gas. So it's getting gas. It's not white. NGK BR9 ES plug. Let's just see what happens when we kick it over. No coolant's popping out of it. It actually feels pretty smooth. Doesn't feel that bad. So I think the crank is fine. Let's see if we have any spark here. There's no way, right? Oh yeah, we did. Great spark. Really good spark. I was not expecting it to have spark. Kicks over nice. Maybe this thing does have 165 pounds of compression. Hmm. Let's get our compression tester in there and we'll check it. All right, get our compression tester in. Let's see what we get. All right, we're looking for 165 here. Let's see what happens, throttle open. Holy, 220 pounds of compression? What the heck? <laughs> That's nuts, what the? What the heck is going on there? That's the highest compression I've ever seen on 125 before. <laughs> oh, something's going on. Let's test that again. That cannot be right. <laughs> that is just really funny actually. Yeah. This thing's got 220 pounds of compression. That's the first time I've ever seen a 125 have that. 
That is incredible compression. <laughs> These things usually have like 160 tops, like a good running bike. Fresh rebuild has like 160. Wow. All right, that is very strange. All right, so I'm super confused. The seller said that it had bad scoring on the cylinder and we have 220 pounds of compression. Make that make sense. I don't get it, but we're gonna roll with it and continue on, treat it like any other bike. We've got compression, we have spark. Next is fuel. So, so far we're missing the throttle screw that goes right there to adjust the throttle. So we know one thing is wrong with the carb. See if the slide's going all the way down. Yep. Slide's going all the way down. You can see the top of the carb is broken off. So that's never gonna sit correctly on there. That was a little too easy to take off. Wiring's hooked up here. All right. Plug looks good. This end looks good. We do have a key in carb. Looks like new lines as well. All right, check this out. Needle seems good. Isn't coming up. Take a look in the carb and see what's going on. All right, let's see if there was gas in there. Yeah, lots of gas in there. Definitely water in the gas though. Lots of water in the gas. Well, that could be one of the problems. You can see the separation happening there. See that? Two different layers. One's water, one's gas. So lots of water in the gas. All right. These are really stripped out. Look how stripped out these are. Holy cow. This bike is just rough. Some water in there. Looks pretty clean. Yeah, it looks pretty clean. So I think the, the seller probably cleaned it out at one point. There's the pin for the float. Let's get that out of there. That looks good. I'm guessing the float height was set wrong. You can see that tab's really far up right here. See how far up that tab is. I'm just gonna bend that back to the stock position here. Needle. Looks pretty good. All right, so far so good. Let's see what the main jet is. Main jet, we've got a 160. Sounds about right. We'll check the stock jetting on this. Checking out the seat here. Seat looks good. Doesn't look too bad. Check out that pilot jet.
Pilot is a 42. Let's see if that's clogged. Nope. Not clogged. So that wasn't the problem. I think it was just the water and the gas. Let's see the air screw here. Oh, there is one. Let's see here. One, two, two turns out. So everything seems correct in the car. There's the, uh, the throttle screw right there. You can see it's broken off inside there. So we're going to try to drill that out. Just a plastic screw. Take it easy out. See if they'll grab it. All right, we got that out. That was easy. Yeah, you can see that it's just plastic. So it came right out. All right, so now we just have to find a new screw to use. All right, so this carb was leaking out of the overflow pretty good. So we're just gonna dump some gas in here and see if there's a leak. Fill that all the way up. All right, so no leaking. We know it's either the needle and seat or the float height at this point. So it's not the actual bowl leaking. All right, so this bike has a pro circuit pipe on it, so you wanna jet that to the pipe. For the jetting on this, 160, which we have in it for the main jet, is stock, and 42 for the pilot is stock. That's what we have. So pro circuit says they want you to run a 158 for the main, and a stock pilot jet, so. I mean, 160 is close enough. We're just gonna leave it 160. But yeah, so it's basically stock settings for that pro circuit pipe. So everything's good here. We're just gonna clean this out, go through all the passageways with some brake cleaner, get this all cleaned, and then we'll set the float height to the correct float height. All right, we got the carburetor all back together, got the float height set, so it shouldn't leak, but we'll test it before we put it on the bike. Here is the new throttle screw here. I think it's the same. Yeah, it looks to be. Got the spring in the washer here as well. All right, let's get that into place. Leave it there for now, and we'll adjust that once we get this thing running. All right, before we put the car back on, let's check out the reeds, see how bad those are. Just take a peek at them. I'll take a peek at the boot as well. Make sure the manifold's not cracked. Leave that gasket on there, I guess. There's a bunch of water in there. Water droplets everywhere. So these reeds are actually open right here. You guys can see that. See how they're open. You can see the gap between there, so we're just gonna flip those around and fix that gap. 
and we'll blow that out with the air compressor. Here's the manifold. A couple, cr a couple cracks right here, but that doesn't go all the way through at all, so that looks good still. That checks out. Just the reeds are open a little bit. All right, we got the reeds fixed, carburetor back in. Got a brand new plug going in, BR9 ES plug. Head on there. Alright, let's get the tank hooked back up. We'll get some gas going to the carb. I'll attempt to fire this thing up. Alright, carb is not leaking. Let's go for it. That does not sound good at all. Something's rattling around. I'm honestly just surprised I fired up. <laughs> Listen to this. I can't tell if that's the chain or what that is. Let's see. That does not sound good. Starts right up. It's running pretty good. But something's banging around badly. I can't tell what that's coming from though. Let's see if she fires right back up. Ooh. That does not sound good. We're not, uh, we're not gonna kick it over anymore. E. Sounds really, really bad. Almost like a rod knock. Not good. But she fired up and ran, and uh, it was running pretty good. So, I think what we're gonna do is investigate that sound I don't know if it's the power valves or what. Maybe the rod isn't hooked up. So let's get this pipe off of here first. Oh yeah, a bunch of water came out. Not good. That came out of the pipe right there. Something was making an awful sound. I don't think that should be making a knocking sound right there. Let's see, I'll kick it over. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> It's not doing that knocking sound, but the power valves aren't moving at all. That rod's not moving. So I wonder if something in the clutch area got messed up and stripped out that gear for the power valves. Maybe that's what we were hearing. So what I think I'm gonna do is take up the clutch side. It's actually running pretty good now, but I'm afraid that we broke something in the clutch side area. So See how bad this JB Weld patch is. I wonder if it's the cover right here that's broken or the clutch cover. It'll be interesting to see the, uh, the oil as well. What that looks like. Cover for the water pump. What's the gasket on there? It's not too bad. Is that still attached? That's still working. Let's see. So, so far, no cracking on this cover. Let's rip that JB Weld off of here. <laughs> Must be on the clutch cover. Interesting, I'm not seeing any cracks yet from the JB Weld. All right, drain bolt is right up there. Let's get this oil drained out. I can see it through the window here. It's all the way filled up. metal flakes in the oil. Quite a few actually. Hoping that's from the clutch side. See all the metal flakes floating around. We're gonna begin taking this clutch cover off. Let's uh, start by getting this power valve rod out. There's a little pin right here that comes out. Slide off like that. Pretty sure that's not supposed to be like that. Alright, and this comes off. Let's 
new gasket on here. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's coming. There's really no water in the oil. Alright, gasket. I want to rip that off. All the gears look good in there. No teeth are off of there. Looks good. Clutch basket looks pretty good. Not too bad. Crank gear looks good. Yeah, everything looks pretty decent actually. So there's no spot that has JB Weld on here. You can see. So that repair was probably just because it was leaking from the gasket. I think they just tried to JB Weld it, which is really weird. But I don't even think they needed it. So luckily, this is fine. Yeah. Uh, check that out. That's the problem right there. That gear's moving without moving the crank. See that? So I'm guessing that just... Yeah, look at that. So that Woodruff key, I bet, is missing. In there. See that? It's not moving the actual crank. It does eventually, but it's loose in there. So that's what we were hearing, knocking around. All right, well, at least we found the problem. Let's start tearing into this thing. Doesn't hurt to check out the clutch as well. Take the push right out. Let's clutch off here. That looks pretty good. See if it shifts. I haven't checked that yet. All right, shifts smoothly through all the gears. Everything's working in the shifting area. Let's see what's going on with this guy. Let's get that off of there. Yeah, that Woodruff key is sheared off. See that? That would be the problem. So 
So that's why that was loose in there. It's a really sheared off woodruff key. All right, so we have to get a new woodruff key. We're gonna take apart the top end and see how bad that cylinder is. The, uh, the seller said it was pretty scored up. And then we're gonna check out those power valves because I don't think it should be doing that. Where there's no spring tension at all. So we'll check out the head too because that's not sitting flat on the cylinder. It almost looks like somebody took a screwdriver and was prying the head off the cylinder and like scored it all up is what it looks like to me. But we gotta get the mount off, the hoses off, and uh, all the bolts off. See if the head will come off of here. Popped right off. Yeah, that head definitely needs to be resurfaced. That is really bad. That is really bad. Look at all those pits in there. So either a new head. We'll get that resurfaced. See what this gasket looks like. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Cylinder needs to be resurfaced too. You can see. Looks like they took a screwdriver, like I said before, to uh, get this off. Piston looks good. That looks brand new. So he wasn't kidding. Washers under these. I think this will pop off of here. Well, that wasn't on there too tight. doesn't look too bad. Hmm. I don't see any super deep scratches. Yeah, just some lines, but can't catch my fingernail on them. Piston ring is free. Let's get this gasket off. 
basket looks new. Yeah, piston is brand new, so he did put a new piston in there. Yeah, no up and down play on the rod. Huh, looks pretty good. It's not that bad, actually. Yeah, piston doesn't look bad. We'll measure the piston ring. Yeah, rod feels good. Wow. All right, closer look at the head here. You can see it might possibly be able to be saved if we just trim that down a bit, but it might be too far gone. You can see there's pretty big divots in there. I can't get my fingernail in any of these lines. They're just, they're just uh, discoloration marks. My fingernail doesn't catch at all on those. See that? I think a light home would get rid of that discoloration. See that? It's just discolored. So I think he thought those were scratches, but it's just discoloring from the piston. So cylinder looks really good. But you can hear the power valves. And I think that's what we were hearing. Maybe there is no spring. All right, just looked it up. There is no spring on the power valves. So I think the noise we were hearing was that gear in the engine by the clutch. That uh, crank gear that was loose on there. So I'm guessing that was just wobbling around in there, making that knocking sound. So let's take off the power valves and uh, just see what's going on. That looks good. No teeth are broken off. Put these in a little baggie. like this. Should be able to. There we go. There's that rod. Nope. That one need to come off. Now this whole assembly can come out. That's what that looks like. So that piece comes off like that. This comes apart. And that's on a pin. Right there. So that slides up and down like that. Interesting. So you can see that's all full of gas. So power valves check out too. I 
I don't know why it had such high compression. 220 pounds of compression is a lot. So we're gonna measure the ring gap and see what that was at. All right, we got the ring here. The ring was on the right way. The end right there was facing up on the piston. So that was good. Let's get the ring gap measured here. See a nice tight ring gap there. That looks like that's gonna be perfect. Get our feeler gauge out. Fifteen thousandths. Fifteen or sixteen. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit less than sixteen. I think it's fifteen. Yep. So ring gap is fifteen thousandths of an inch, which is perfect. So that checks out as well. Taking a closer look at the piston here, it looks like we're running a 56 millimeter. So we'll see if that's stock. But piston looks good. Just checking to see if there's holes for the bridge. And yep, two holes right here on the piston. So those were drilled as well. All right, just looked it up. So 56 millimeters is what we have. So that's actually a plus two millimeter uh, big bore piston. So the standard bore is 54 millimeters. So the cylinder's probably on its last bore. All right, so after tearing this thing down, everything looks pretty decent. I think the main problem was that woodruff key that was kind of partially sheared off right here. But not too much wrong with it. I was expecting a lot worse. The crank is fine, so the bottom end is all good. Kind of lucked out there. So I compiled a list of what we're gonna need. Woodruff key, shock. I'm not sure what the price is on that one. I looked it up on eBay. We might have to rebuild that or send it out to be rebuilt. But Woodruff key is around seven bucks. Lever, we just need the brake lever. You can see that's broken off right there. That's gonna be around $11. Oil is eight. A full gasket kit's 40 bucks for it. Chain and sprockets, 65 for both sprockets and the chain. And then handlebars are 50, because you've got a bent bar right here. So total came to 181, plus the initial 1,060 we paid for the bike. Comes to a grand total of 1,240. And it'll probably go up, depending on what the, the shock costs. Well, that's not bad at all. I thought we'd have over two grand stuck into this thing. So I am pleasantly surprised. It didn't need as much work as I thought. I thought for sure it'd be a lot more work. I hope you guys enjoyed picking this thing up, getting it to run, and then diagnosing the issues with this bike. It was definitely uh, interesting tearing it down and going through the whole thing. You never know what you're going to find when you buy a cheap bike off of Facebook. I was expecting the worst, and honestly, it wasn't that bad. Um, the guy said the cylinder was bad, but we ended up getting really lucky. and That was actually fine, otherwise we'd be screwed. So. Yeah, didn't turn out too bad. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video. And until next time, we are out.